Hi, this is Neary Sword and Steel, and today I'm going to open this bolt action a Stug 3 as well as assemble it. I'm going to show you how you can change it from the Stug 3 to the Stu 42. Uh, probably do a bit of magnetization so that you can switch to and fro. Now, I would definitely be using it as a Stug 3. But in case anyone out there wants to know if you can uh, magnetize it, we're going to check that out today as well. All right. So first we have the cards for both the Stug and the Stu 42. This was Packed for you by Vess. Thank you, Vess. Or Voss. And our transverse. There is this. Do 42s. You can put the shirts in on for another 10 points. In experience, it's 152 points. Regular, it's 190 points. In veteran, it's 288. And as it was only made in 1943, it is available for mid and late war. And then the Stug 3. And it may too have shirts and armor for 10 points, but I don't think I'll be putting it on because, you know, in early war, or well, in the earlier part of the war, it didn't have shirts and, and they always would fall off, so I don't think I'll be modeling it like that. Yeah. Alright. Some blast templates. Now we have the tank, two sprues. I am looking for mold lines, and you know, it all looks very good. Alright. Just a page showing other options that they have, um, other things that they sell by artillery. And what the action is about. And our assembly guide. 10, 11, 7, 14. Alright. 10. Uh, cutting these smaller pieces. If there's any really small pieces, they might be a bit brittle. Um, so just bear that in mind. We're cutting. Okay. six. Nine. And now I'm just removing all of the little sprue bits that I didn't completely remove until it's smooth. Oh, that's handy. There's a bigger circle and large and a smaller circle, in case you didn't know which way it goes. It definitely wants you to put it this way. How handy. We are looking for... This is um, liquid cement or plastic glue. This is where the wheels attach to the track. And in there. I kind of want to do this all together, so I'm going to put all of, it, all of it down at the same time. You have a bit of time with plastic glue to get it where you want it to be. Alright. While that's drying, on to the next one. I'm doing this video today because I'm I I needed a bit of relaxation and I thought I might be able to do a nice fun little stug creation so I could put out a video. I am working on paint with me. It just takes a while. It's going to be a 40k paint with me. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just do an assemble with me, since I don't have a lot of time. An assemble is stug. Well, that had to happen. I saw it on my pile of shame, and 
now it will be no longer a pile of shade. Well, it'll, it'll be a gray pile of hay, but it's, it's going to be gray anyway, because all my German army is um, German gray. So. so, hey, if one's a little bit too gray, it's not going to be noticed. I do find it a bit funny. Right, you, uh, the German gray is so close to what, what the, uh, sprue color looks like. So you spend so much time painting it and making it look nice, and from a distance it looks like you didn't paint it at all. <laughs> this, thus far, is a very straightforward model to create. No problems fitting anything together. I mean, this is just the beginning, but I'm happy. Everything seems to be fitting together nicely, and I'm not seeing any warp. That shall work. All right. All right. Do, 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 do. A little bit of flashing that has that caused it not to fit properly. Looks like I need to cut uh, cut out a bit more of this. Really no harm in cutting out too much. It's all going to be invisible. And it's just about fitting your model in there. There we go. Seems empty. This is where I have an advantage. Because my fingers are small. I can't imagine how more difficult it is for someone who has slightly larger fingers. Tweezers time! Just like that, I guess. So just put the glue around. Okay. I swear, I do like assembly, but eh, fiddly itty bits, um, I swear I have to hum a merry tune. Let's hum a merry tune, do 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 do, and you won't ever feel the pain of putting on these bits. Ah, oh, he's gonna do it this way. Yeah. All right, so we've got the longer gun and the shorter, fatter gun or 75 millimeter versus the 105 millimeter. I know. Oh. Oh, look at that. Okay. You know what? I think that this piece, this little piece here, is actually long enough and tight enough that you could probably just take it in and out. Well, let's just this one out without actually having to magnetize them at all. All right, this one's a bit looser. Uh, but with some um, a paint on it, it won't be. This one is quite not loose at all. So you could definitely change it up. If you were going to magnetize it, you'd just use itty bitty magnets. You'd want to put a magnet inside and then you'd want to cut off the magnet's thickness for this and put a magnet right there and then it would just snap in. Just need a tiny magnet, smaller than that D. Just snap right in. Okay, so 
So I'm just going to leave those guys off for now so I can work with this easier. So as it says, don't glue this part. Now <laughs> looking at it, it suggests that you it wants you to put it through here, but looking at it, it does not look like that actually works. So we're gonna put it through here instead. Which is not quite what the image suggests but that's the way it actually fits on, so that must be it. And this part is the part that they say not to glue so that you can move your turret. And now number 16 to keep that part in place. So I assume they're supposed to fit in there really well. They do not seem to be fitting. I want to make certain that the fit is good before I glue them. No. Oh. Okay. Got them now. A little bit of pushing. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of plastic glue there. Don't want it to chance getting to the parts that we don't want to move though. Really, while it's still tacky, we should be able to just move it up and down to make certain that doesn't happen. Alright, there we are. Hatch closed means less likely to snap off at some point down the road. The Sturmerschutz, that is, assault gun was developed as an infantry support weapon based on the Panzer III chassis. After modifications and changes of weapons, it finally became an all-purposed armored vehicle. The Stug III was produced in more numbers than any other German armored fighting vehicle, over 10,000 in all. Production of the Stug III was severely curtailed by Allied bombing, following which the Germans shifted some Panzer IV production over to assault guns built on the Panzer IV chassis. The Stu-42 or Sturmabitz was a Stug-3 converted to mount, a 105mm howitzer. It entered service in 1943 and were deployed for close infantry support, fulfilling the role originally assigned to the Stugs. Goodness, this piece is so tiny. <laughs> Be very careful with 26. It's a very teeny piece and you may accidentally cut off part of it. Yeah, I think it extends down all the way to here. Oh my goodness. It's a small little piece, so I'm gonna clean the sprue part off here after it's on this part dried. Not certain why they have this separate and not just have it as one piece, but I guess they had their reasons. These scopes are the cutest, but also the most terrible things in the world. Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh no. Don't you get any ideas? You are getting in this tank. Initially intended as a mobile assault gun for direct support for infantry, the Stug 3 was nevertheless added to the artillery line, as there was no room for it at the time with the infantry. The Sturmgeschütz 3 series of vehicles proved very successful and served on all fronts, from Russia to North America and West Europe to Italy, as assault guns and tank destroyers. Because of their low silhouette, the Stug 3s were 
easy to camouflage and were difficult targets for the enemy to destroy. It was the bombing raids of the Alcat factory that resulted in the significant drop in Stug 3 production. And from then on, they took a Panzer IV and started making the Stug IV. There are several still around in museums that one could look at. Some of them are completely in working order. According to Wikipedia, USA has one. Belgium has one, Spain has one, Finland has one, Poland has one, and and a hobbyist in England has one. Here I'm adding the optional man to be sticking out of the tank. I find the little men are great ways of differentiating the different tanks if you give them different options. Now, as I said, I'm not going to apply the shirts in, but if you were going to use the shirts in, then you just need to drill six holes into the area there. They've got little squares to show you where you need to drill them. And, uh, and then you could put on the shirts and as you like. I'm just choosing not to because, as I said, they really weren't used until late in the war and even when they were used, they had a tendency to fall off. And thus far, I haven't found a miniature where they aren't an enormous pain to put on. I admit, I will... I will not spend the ten points. I'm satisfied <laughs> with my choices. Well, thank you for watching. I hope that was enjoyable for you. If you're going to be using one of these models, do let me know which one you're choosing. Either the Stug 3 or the Sturmovitz 42. Let me know what your reasoning is behind it. And what else are you putting in your army? I'd love to know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye!